So is here to guide. May you have an encounter with Jehovah tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah chapter 2, chapter 10. Of the ministry and the impact 
of the anointing. The anointing is not the oil. The anointing is the spirit of Christ that is transmitted into the oil or any object, as it were. The anointing is the spirit of God. Somebody say the spirit of God. The anointing is the spirit of God. And which is the spirit of Christ. And the anointing is the word itself. And the word is Christ. That's why Jesus said, the word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. The anointing, the purpose of the anointing is to give life and to quicken spirit. When the spirit of a man is dead, then the man himself is not alive. What makes you alive is the quickness of your spirit. As I say, the power that raised up Jesus Christ from the grave shall also raise you up. So it is the spirit, the spirit of his father, the spirit of the world that quickens whatever is dead in our life. And that is called the anointing. And that's why when the anointing is at work, you just release a wind through your mouth and things begin to happen. The anointing can be, can be used or can be transmitted into any object. Or into anything. The anointing can reside anywhere. You can put the anointing in this leaf and then take it a place and then there will be an encounter. May the anointing of Jehovah's Spirit come upon your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can I hear that? Amen. Amen. Now I'd like you to follow me tonight because you shall be broken Amen. off your shoulder. And of your neck. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now the anointing. Can be carried by anything. Can reside anywhere. You can put the anointing. In a piece of paper. And set it on an errand. You can put an anointing. In, on an handkerchief. And it can run great wonders. You can put the anointing by near speaking a word and send it forth to carry out an assignment. And so when Jesus came, he opened the book. Which book? The book of life. And the Bible said, as soon as he opened it, what he found therein was the portion where prophet Isaiah a prophesy concerning him that his yoke shall be broken over your shoulder and his body over your neck. And he said, All that will take place by the anointed, the anointed. What are the yokes that's what, that needs to be broken in our lives? The yoke of failure in life. People are carrying the yoke of what? Failure. Failure can be found anywhere in the world. Failure is anywhere in the world. Failure can reside anywhere. A man can live in the midst of plenty, in the midst of success, and yet he is struggling. It's called the yoke of failure. It tries to make his work, but it's, not, it's never working. It's a yoke of failure. Yoke of failure in life has wrecked a lot of destiny. They are skillful, they are good, but they are still failing. They are sharp, knowledgeable in school, but they are not succeeding. They can draft out good proposal for business, but yet there's no business coming through for them. 
yoke of failure in the life of anyone here tonight is broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. If I hear your believer, believe in amen. amen. Yoke of repeated problems. Same problem being repeated over and over and over again. The yoke of repeated problem. The problem you've been fighting for five years, three years, four years, fifteen years, there are people dealing with the same problem in life for more than twenty years. The problem is still standing and facing them to the face. Same affliction every year. There are people who always fall sick, same months, same days, every year. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Every particular month in a year, something evil have, must take place in their life. It's a yoke of repeated program. And you hear them say, Sir, every June, something bad always happened to me. People, I've had it over and over. Every particular time in my life, something like this, or, uh, it is normal. They say it is not, it must happen. Something, something must happen. I come in the volume of the book tonight that every repeated yoke in your life is broken right now. Amen. If I hear a believer say amen. amen. The yoke of stagnation. Never making progress. They are just standing still. Where you left them last year, that's where they see at it this year. Living in one space of life for several months, for several years. Doing the same thing over and over without making progress. They are stagnated. The lady said to me, I've been hiding out with this guy for like eight years, close to ten years now. But he's not talking marriage. I say, break the yoke now. Hello? Uh, Do what? Break, break, break that yoke if you want to marry. Break it. Otherwise, you are going nowhere. And then she got mad. <laughs> you need deliverance. And you have not been told what will deliver you. And you are getting angry with the truth. Now, if only you shall know the truth, and only the truth shall set you free. It is not prayer that will set you free. Only the truth can set you free. And the truth is the anointing. Via the word. People always look for a short way said to me, can you do something to turn his ass so that he can marry me by force? If he marry you by force, he will beat you by fire. <laughs> if he marry you by force, he will beat you by fire. He will smack your face every time. You don't need to force him to marry you. Say, do something, pastor. You do something, turn his ass. <laughs> I will bring this picture, marry him by force. I say we blow your face by, by fire. Break that yoke. It is in stagnation. I love me, my lady. You are a foolish girl. Break the yoke. You don't love him. That is not love. That is madness. Anything that is keeping you grounded in one place and you are still tied to it is foolishness. It has become a body. It has become what? A body. You are not yet married to him. You are still praying that God should change his heart. When you marry, what prayer will you be praying? To stay. You will be praying, God, keep him for me. Because you will not stay in that house. Though. Somebody hearing me tonight. Yes, Any yoke that has terminated your life from making progress. Tonight, if you say that, amen, is broken right now. Yoke of unexplainable difficulties. Un there are problems always coming your way. You cannot explain how they come. They always come. Something we always have we say, how did you say I cannot even explain this? This problem is too much. This trouble is too much in my life. Someone said to me, It is by fire that I got a husband. I fought through many years in prayer to get the husband. I got the husband. I prayed for 10 years to get a child. Now I'm praying hard. 
I pray, pray to get to America. Now I'm in America, I'm praying to get my, my green card for 15 years. I'm still looking back. Say, why is my life full of trouble? Unexplainable challenges. Now they are married in 20 years. And then God answered them. When they got here, 10 years after they got here, God answered them. They have children. And I said to her, you fought, fought, fought to get a man. Fought, fought to get children. Now, you are fighting to stay here. See, we are tired. Even in America, we are still fighting to survive. I said, that yoke okay. is broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. Stagnation. Unexplainable difficulties. What people will get paid by a tap of a finger. Somebody is struggling to get it. Their children are already citizens, but they themselves don't have papers. Is that not a yoke? Yes. Ah, what kind of? Miss, is that you explain that one? There are people under yoke of spiritual dryness. Nothing spiritual about their life. When you pray, you feel that some, your prayer is always bouncing back. It doesn't cross the roof of your house. You feel dry every time you want to pray. You don't get inspired. You love to pray, but prayer doesn't work. You don't enjoy the presence of prayer. There's dryness in the atmosphere. When others are getting connected in power, you are not feeling anything, even in service. You are so dry and empty. It's a yoke. Somebody hearing me? Another person is having a strict account of the, of the presence of God. Another person is not expressing anything. A young boy said to me in Lagos, in Nigeria, he said, I've been praying drums there for many years. He said, when I get sick, I, I manage to come to church. I manage sometimes to play drum. I will go back with my sickness. Not, I have never experienced divine healing in any service. And one day he came to our service and he was sitting in the crowd. So I said, young boy, you're a professional brother. Come and play. While he was praying, playing, he came sick in that service and the sickness vanished. And he said, I have a testimony. I said, well, he said, this is the first time in my life since I've been in church, born in a church, serving in a church, being in several ministry. It's the first time I'm sick and I got my healing in the service. He said, I hear people testify of healing. I have never had experience of what it looks like. That was a yoke of spiritual dryness. How can a man be by the pool of water, yet he is thirsty? That is a yoke of spiritual dryness. It is spiritual dryness that makes the man by the pool of Bethesda for 38 years not to be able to jump into the pool. He is spiritually dry. Even if you have to crawl every day, in 38 years, won't you get by to the side of the pool? Yes. Even if you have to crawl to get it. For 38 years, not 38 days, 8 years, 38 years, he was stagnated on his spot. Everybody will get to the pool, get their healing. This man will say, there is nobody to carry me. You don't need somebody to carry me in 38 years to drag yourself to the pool. It's dry. There are people, they are spiritually dry. Their helper is right before them, but their spiritual eyes cannot see them. Nothing tells them what to do. Nothing tells them where to go. They do not hear anything. Nothing inspires them. They are seeing opportunities, but they are not, they are not getting it. It's always passing them. May you grab your opportunities in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Spiritual dryness. Next people to go to church and leave the church the same way they came. No expectation, no manifestation. Another yoke that must be broken in our lives is the yoke of witchcraft. The yoke of voodoo, voodooism. Strange power being invoked and spell casted upon our lives. 
there are powers conjuring strange spirits to afflict us, to make us do what we do not want to do. You hear voices that tells you do this, and you know it's evil, but your heart cannot stop your hand from doing it. When a spell of witchcraft is on, on a man's life, he will go to places he ought not to go. He would have finished the assignment before his eyes get open. That's what we call witchcrafting. They witchcraft him. The craftiness of the witches. <laughs> but I come in the name of just the witches we feed on themselves tonight. Yes. Yoke of lack of helpers. How many of you need helpers this year? Do you know the destiny of every man is tied to another man? God will not come from heaven to carry you. God will not come from heaven to come and carry and save my picking. I carry you. Sorry, my picking. My picking means my child. <laughs> and he will always send another man to help another man. God will always send a man to help man. Spirit help spirit. Man help man. Somebody's help is coming this month. Oh, you didn't say good amen. Yeah. I said somebody's help is coming this month. Yeah. Somebody that will rise up to defend your case. Somebody that will rise up to speak for you. Somebody that will rise up to fight your battle. Yeah. A lady called from Nigeria and she told us about her husband trying to see another woman, always going to sit down in the house of his another woman. And she just had a baby and they kept calling and then my wife just asked me yesterday, said, okay, what can you do? I've cancelled enough. I've I said, the cancel is sufficient for wisdom and deliverance. If she wants deliverance, let her follow the cancel and then help will come. It's not prayer. Wisdom is profitable to direct. You want your husband back, do what you should do as a woman. Stop looking for prayer points. And I said to her, he said, but that's not what I said. You follow this principle. Tell her she should obey every of the word you have given to her to do. If she obey it, then help is on the way. And then she said to her, do this, do this. Send a message to your husband and tell him you are sorry for everything you have done, for embarrassing him. So, but you always go to another woman and say, oh, you, do you know whether, whether they are sleeping together? You have not told them. But it's degenerating. And you are trying to pray it out of proportion. Quickly tell him you are sorry before you lose the man. That's wisdom. And then I will say, No, I'm not the one at fault. Why should I say? You should come back and say sorry to me. You will lose the man. And then she did. And then my wife said to me, Please, can you, you maybe you should find, do something about the case? I said, Let him, if she cannot obey your counsel, there's no prayer. There is no prayer. And I left. And then by evening, then she called and said, please don't bother again. She has called. The man called her and apologized. Say, my wife, I love you. I'm sorry. Another person, God raised another woman to go fight the battle. And tell the man, Mr. Man, you come here too much. Come stop coming to this woman's house. Go back to your wife. <laughs> God will send you help us. fight and talk about you don't need the talk. Do the talk and let God send the help to you. If you have been prayer point, the problem would have been increasing. You need an helper to get you where you are going. You need help that will send you thousands of dollars Amen. and say, go and use it anyhow. Yes, <laughs> you need an help that will drop a car in front of your house and say, yes, it's a gift to you. Yes, I say, but I'm not qualified to drive yet. You say, yes, wait, keep the car where you, when you are 18, you can begin to drive your car. Is somebody hearing me? You need an helper who will marry you and treat 
treat you as a queen, not as a be uh, not as a body. Do not treat you as a piece of log of wood in the house, like an another thing you are scattered up. So men, when they say that is my wife, they are proud to say they see that they are, like they have conquered the woman. See, I must be a smart guy. I got her. I told you I'm going to get her. So they are they post about it. I got her. I told you. I'm going to get her. They do not have the interest of the success of that lady in heart. You need help us that we connect with your life to make your dreams come true. You need Joseph that we interpret your dream. You have a dream. You don't know how to get there. You need an interpreter of your dream. Yes. You have a business proposal. You have an idea that will make you great, but you don't know how to get it to get done. Now, you need somebody who knows how to get it done, and that fellow is coming your way this year. Yeah. You have an idea, but you don't have the wrong money to make it come to reality. Somebody has the money, he does not have the idea. The man with idea, the one with money, they are meeting this year to make business work for you. Yeah. If I hear you say the Lord is amen. Yeah. Helpers of destinies are the instrument of change that we need on daily basis to get to destination. The destiny becomes colorful. Oh my God, I have to be a whistle tonight. <laughs> Laboring without results, laboring without harvest, is a yoke that must be broken. Laboring without results, laboring without harvest, is a yoke that must be broken in 2015. Because many of us this year, you shall have greater harvest in the name of Oh, you is a good place to say good amen. I say you shall have great harvest this year in the name of Jesus. Whatever you set your hands to do this year, you shall have results to show for it. I often said in our ministry, only results terminates insults. Only results terminates insults. Are there people insulting you? You don't need to fight for yourself. Put results in their face. They will shut up. That woman is stupid. Stop fighting that you are not stupid. Show them results of a wise woman. They will shut up. That woman has nothing to show. Show them result, prove them wrong, and then the, the, the battle is over. Stop saying, stop, stop calling me a foolish woman. I'm not a foolish woman. You are talking too much. Stop. Prove a result, put it on ground, then matter close. Yes, yes, what have you done with your life? Well, they are challenging. They are challenging you. Don't get mad. What have you done with your life is a challenge. Tell them, wait for me, I'm coming. Stop saying, why are you talking to me? Why are you trying to pull me down? Yeah, now nobody's putting you down. Somebody's trying to challenge you all to God. To take responsibility. Amen. There are jokes that makes people take your own result. The credit that ought to go for you, they take it and give it to another man. You do the work, somebody here gets the, the credit. That is witchcraft of the highest order. That is a yoke and body that needs to be broken in our lives. Are you listening to me? You do the good job, somebody is getting the credit for the good job you did. Every time, that is a yoke. When it's time to be favored, they don't remember you. When it's time for serious hard work, they call you. When it's time to enjoy, they are calling somebody else. That yoke today is broken. I said that yoke is broken. Somebody stand up and shout fire. Who is here tonight? Who is blessed tonight? Amen. Who is stepping out of people tonight in Vito? Amen. Isaiah chapter 65. Isaiah 65, verse 22. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and my elect shall long enjoy the work of their ends. Isaiah 65, verse 22. They shall not build and another inhabit. 
they shall not plant and another hate. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and my elect shall not enjoy the work of their ends. Amen. You will not work for another man to enjoy. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. The scripture, the word of God guarantees that you cannot build a house for another man to go live inside. There are people, they, they struggle to build a project. At the conclusion of the project, they die. Another person takes possession of it. They don't get to enjoy the labor. You manage to package demand. You package demand. Demand is that solid, good looking. Then after that, you need to begin to enjoy him. Another girl come around. One tiny girl with a tiny skirt come tracking him. Whisk him away. Say, what a looking good guy. When the guy was not a nobody, a nobody they didn't see him. You have labored and prepared him solid. Then they come and say, where have you been, guy? <laughs> brother said to me, he said, I, I spent serious money on my girl, sent her to school. Now she's a graduate. Somebody came and took her away. Pastor, I said, you're a foolish man. Stop crying. You're crying for a girl. There are many fishes in the ocean. He said, I, I labor, I suffered, I spent hard and money. Now she's a graduate. I picked her from the village. I, I said, yes, and I'm about to leave it. But if he said I'm about to come back as a graduate. <laughs> it was painful, brother. He said, Pastor, if you see this girl, when I brought her from the village, I brought her because the city girls, they are too difficult for me to handle. So I brought this girl to push her up, to package her up, to make her my own test. Now she's ready for meat to eat. <laughs> God have mercy. You will not labor, another one will eat or eat. Say to yourself, I must enjoy my harvest this year. I want to prophesy to somebody tonight. May the gate of the nobles, Amen. the gate of mighty people, the gate of those that will fail for your dreams, Amen. open for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The gate of people that will pack their limousine in front of your house and say, hey guy, come in, let's talk business. Amen. The gate of nobles. Honorable women will open the doors of their house, inviting you to come and eat Amen. presidential lunch. Amen. To talk business and talk ideas. Amen. Connection that will reposition you. Amen. That will introduce you to right and right talkers. Amen. May that doors open for you. quickly say this. The doors of wasters, those who know how to, how to destroy others, their doors are shut down. They will not have access to your own breakthrough. Because there are harvest wasters. There are harvest diviter. There are things, listen to me, I've been there before. Things that should come to you, somebody will always divert it to somebody else. Yes. There are people like that. There are friends like that. They call themselves your friends. When good thing is coming true for you, they will divert it to another person. Wicked, wicked, dead friends. <laughs> when wickedness is more than wickedness, pardon my English, it becomes wicked dead. <laughs> The Bible says the wickedness of the wicked man shall not stand. 
harvest manipulators. You always manipulate your harvest. 100% is meant for you. They will tell you it's only 20% that is available. Every time you invest, you don't get the right proportion of your investment. They are harvest, the writers, harvest manipulators. Laban manipulated the harvest of Jacob until God brought him here. I want to declare this prophetic word for somebody who's in is strong right now. Every local and international harvest that is meant for you in this year 2015, it shall not be diverted from you. There are some business that should come from Africa to you, from China, from Dubai, from Saudi Arabia. Real cool money. Are you listening to me? Real, real money. Real breakthrough. Real. My dear saw it. He said, $150,000. She screamed. I said, yes, baby girl, the money is coming. <laughs> it was one fifty. she saw. And then she saw it as $150,000. I say you are not seen by error. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what you call out is coming out wrong. Yeah. Many years ago, every time I need money, I will write a check in my name, payable to myself. I will put it in my bedroom. And everyone has said, payable to Israel. I will write the thousand. I will invoke it on the money comes. I've done it several times. I was praying for a woman. No, Pastor Ola, I did for Pastor Fadi, uh, Fadi um, um, not Fadi, uh, Fadi, uh, Fadi, you know, several of them like that. I did for them. Just on a man too. And I said, go and type the name of the person you want him to give you money. You can call them. Confirm. I, I pray into a man too. I say, go and tie the name of the person that can help you. Put his name and call him. Tell him, social amount of money. Write it and tie to it. And they call them by fire in less than a week and they pay the money. There's an anointing that can invoke money to the right hand. Tonight, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it will happen to you. <laughs> it sounds strange, right? It's like a magical power, right? <laughs> it's the anointing of the spirit. Jesus needed money because he needed to pay tax. And they challenged him and his disciples, and they had no money. And Jesus said to Peter, go to the river. And the first fish you cash, open the mouth, you shall find money. Pay our taxes and send to the bill. Who put the money in the mouth of the fish? Heaven doesn't produce money. If the money comes from heaven to the mouth, that is, it means God is doing 419. Trying to produce the money of that country. No. What happened is this, when Jesus said, go to the mouth of the fish, there was a fisherman trying to catch fish on the river, and the money is broken, fell, and the fish caught it and pocketed it, and waiting for Peter to come to fish it. And so when Peter got to the river, and Peter was saying, the master sent me to get money, the fish came out and said, Peter, ah, I command in the name of Jesus, the money that will take your life will receive it. I say receive it. I say receive it. In the name of Jesus. 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 Somebody shall fire. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Say, Lord. 